In this video, we're going to learn a method for not making too many mistakes when we run many statistical tests. In statistics, we often only want to commit a type 1 error 5% of the time. We say that alpha is equal to 0.05. For example, if a drug doesn't work, we only want to make a mistake and say it does work 5% of the time. Limiting type 1 errors by choosing alpha is the foundation of hypothesis testing that you learn in any introductory statistics class. But what if we're testing multiple hypotheses? For example, my one hypothesis might be that the drug doesn't help with blood pressure, and my other hypothesis might be that the drug doesn't help cure baldness. Well, if our alpha is 0.05, then 5% of the time we'd accidentally say the drug does work for blood pressure. And 5% of the time, we'd accidentally say the drug does work for baldness. But altogether, we'd make errors more than 5% of the time. It would be somewhere between 5 and 10% of the time, because there might be some overlap. We call this the family-wise error rate. In our whole family of hypotheses, how often do we make an error? Well, we make errors more than the 5% of the time we do for each individual hypothesis. Obviously, this issue with the high family-wise error rate would be even worse if we had three, four, or even more hypotheses. The exact family-wise error rate will depend on whether the tests are independent, but the family-wise error rate will generally increase with the number of tests. As we have more tests, the family-wise error rate increases. And in modern applications like genetics, we are often testing many hypotheses at the same time, so controlling the family-wise error rate becomes very very difficult. Here's an idea. What if for each of the two hypotheses, instead of committing type 1 errors 5% of the time, we only commit them 2.5% of the time? 5% divided by 2. So 2.5% 2 of the time, we'd accidentally say the drug works for blood pressure, and 2.5% 2 .5 of the time, we'd accidentally say the drug works for baldness. Then the family-wise error rate would be between 25 and 5%, which is less than 5%. This idea is called Bonferroni correction. Bonferroni correction is this idea that if the desired family-wise error rate is alpha, then just conduct each of the m individual hypothesis tests with type 1 error rate alpha star equal to alpha over m. This is what we did. If we desired a family-wise error rate of 0.05, then for each of the m equals 2 hypothesis tests, they could be conducted at alpha star of 0.025. This may sound like an obvious idea, but it also has a lot of issues. What is the drawback of changing each alpha from 0.05 to 0.025? When we make fewer type 1 errors, we are making it harder to reject the null. So the power of the test goes down too. In other words, when we make fewer type 1 errors, we make more type 2 errors. So when I make it less likely that I say that a non-effective drug does work, which is good, I also make it less likely that I say the effective drug works, which is bad. And you might say, well, you win some, you lose some. And this is true, but did we even have to do this? In rare scenarios, we don't have to decrease alpha at all to control the family-wise error rate. Suppose that our hypothesis 1 and our hypothesis 2 were the same, that the drug doesn't help with blood pressure. Since these are the same hypothesis, if I fail to reject one, then I fail to reject both. And if I reject one, then I reject both. Let's try to visualize this. This box represents the universe where the null hypothesis is true. This is the 95% of the time we will correctly fail to reject both null hypotheses. We want the family-wise error rate to be 5%, so this is the 5% of the time we will incorrectly reject either null. If we always make the same decision on both hypotheses, then the 5% of the time that we reject hypothesis 1 is the exact same 5% of the time we reject hypothesis 2. And since the overlap completely, we can have a type 1 error rate of 5% for each one and still have the family-wise error rate of 5%. This perfect positive correlation is one extreme situation. Let's consider the opposite extreme, two hypotheses which are negatively correlated. If our null hypothesis is that the coin is fair, we might have an alternative hypothesis that the coin is biased towards heads, and an alternative hypothesis that the coin is biased towards tails. These hypotheses are opposite, so we'll never reject the null in favor of both alternatives. So what if there was no overlap in when we reject the hypotheses? Then when we desire a 5% family-wise error rate, we could simply have a 2.5% error rate for each hypothesis. If there's no overlap, though, 
we can't raise the type 1 error rate above 2.5% at all. If we raised it to 3%, then the non-overlapping 3% error rates make the family-wise error rate more than 5%, which is not allowed. We see that we make too many errors. If the hypotheses are perfectly positively correlated, meaning they are the same essentially, we can perform each test with type 1 error rate alpha to have family-wise error rate alpha. But if the hypotheses are perfectly negatively correlated, then we must perform each test with a type 1 error rate of alpha over m using the Bonferroni correction to have the correct desired family-wise error rate of alpha. The Bonferroni correction covers this worst case scenario, but it has the drawback of being overly cautious in most scenarios and lowering power unnecessarily. This is why the Bonferroni correction is considered very conservative. What about an intermediate case where they're not positively or negatively correlated, but independent? This is an intermediate between the two extremes of perfect positive or negative correlation. And while alpha over m seems like a simple intuitive solution, probability actually works in a multiplicative way for independent events, so there's another type of correction that would work for independent events. Let's let the type 1 error rate for each event be 1 minus 1 or alpha to the 1 over m. This is called a Shadak correction. Let's see what our family-wise error rate is if we use this as our type 1 error rate. While the family-wise error rate is the probability of at least one type 1 error, which is 1 minus the probability of no type 1 errors. Since the probability of making no type 1 error is 1 minus alpha star, the probability of making no type 1 errors for all m test is 1 minus alpha star to the m. Well, let's plug in our definition of alpha star, and we get a lot of stuff going on here, but some stuff cancels out, and this is what we're left with, and then the 1 over m to the m cancels out too, and we got 1 minus 1 over alpha, which is alpha. So our family-wise error rate would be alpha if we use the Shadak correction. So if m was equal to 2, then we could make our uh, type 1 error rate 0.0253. And this is less conservative than the Bonferroni correction of 0.025. This shows that we didn't really need to lower our type 1 error rate this much, but the Bonferroni correction covers the worst case scenario. Uh, if m was equal to 10, then we would see that the Shadak correction is less conservative than the Bonferroni correction, but only by a little bit. So the Bonferroni correction is conservative in that the hypothesis has a lower type 1 error rate than necessary if the hypotheses are independent, but it's usually not that big of a difference. So in summary, the Bonferroni correction controls the probability of making any type 1 error, which we call the family-wise error rate. It does so by testing each individual hypothesis at alpha star equal to alpha over m, where alpha is the desired family-wise error rate and m is the number of hypotheses. This always works, but at great cost to the statistical power of each test. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe to learn more statistics.